Hey guys, welcome back. So today I'm continuing work on these two champion generators. I made a video on these recently and both of these were at a scrapyard. These were destined to be melted down for their value in metal. Now, the one here on the left had no compression and a lot of missing parts. And the one on the right has compression and missing the same parts, but the tank and the frame are, are severely damaged. So on the last video, I actually started off with the one that I thought was gonna be terminally ill. And as it turns out, it was just a stuck intake valve, which freed up pretty easily. So I ended up replacing all the missing parts. And by the end of that video, this machine was running pretty well. So if you're interested in that video, I'll link to that up above in, in the description. But that kind of leaves me wondering what to do about this. Even if it runs and makes power, the frame and the tank are not in very good shape. But that's getting way ahead of myself. I haven't heard this run and I don't know if it makes power. So I did buy a recoil for this engine. I'm gonna bolt it on right now. We'll give it a squirt of starting fluid and see if we can't get the engine to run for a bit, you know, just long enough to see if it actually makes power. Okay, I checked the oil real quick. It is full, a little bit dirty, but it's fine for testing. I also have the light plugged in and turned on, so I'm gonna give it a little squirt of starting fluid and see if we can't get that light to come on. Okay, good. The engine sounds good. The light came on. So I'd say we have a good generator here. I do have a clone carb that I can throw on here. So I'm going to do that now. I don't have an airbox yet, but I do have part of an airbox, enough to uh, get the filter in place. So I'm going to put those two things on. We'll bring it outside and run it for a bit and see if uh, everything continues to sound good. The spring on this governor rod is missing, and without it, there's gonna be a bit of slop between the throttle and the governor arm, so it will cause it to surge. So I will need to get a new one of those at some point. Yeah, the airbox I have actually doesn't have a filter element, so there's no point in putting it on right now. We'll just test it like this. So I'd say we have a problem with the low oil switch, but I can see someone's already unplugged it. So now we know why this was thrown away. Now it isn't always the oil switch, which is what's inside the engine. There's a low oil module. And I'd say based on what I'm seeing, it must be the low oil module. So let me see if I can't get that out or at least unplugged for now and make sure that it stays running. 
So this one's a little bit different than most. Usually there's a little oil module bolted on the side of the engine, but that's not the case here. Instead it has this little brain box here, which does a few things. You know, it powers the fuel solenoid, it powers the electric choke, which is no longer present. Uh, there's also two wires going down to the electric start solenoid. I think one is the charging wire and the other one is actually the wire to trip the electric start to get the engine to crank. And then we're left with two other wires. We have this brown wire, which I'm not sure actually what that is. Actually, that must be the, the, um, the wire coming from the stator here for the charge circuit. And then we have the black wire here, which goes up and down to the coil. So if I unplug this, this should run just fine. Now I won't be able to shut it off unless I run it out of fuel or reconnect this wire, but that's fine. I just want to validate that the engine will run for more than a second. And yes, I did check the oil again. It is full. So that's not the issue. The switch isn't plugged in anyway, so it's definitely not that. Okay, well the plot thickens. The engine stayed running, which is good, but it was running fast at about 65 hertz. I'd say a little above 65 hertz. The more shocking thing is the voltage. We were at 167 volts, and even with the engine running fast, the voltage should stay at about 120 volts, but that's not the case. So maybe we have a bad AVR. You know, I was going to slow the engine speed down, try it again, see if the voltage is any better, but this area of damage crushed the tank, and it's actually pushing where the governor's spring adjustment is. So most likely that got damaged or bent, which is why the engine is running fast. So I need to peel the tank out of there somehow, adjust the governor so that the engine speed is more normal. We'll double check the voltage, and if that's still off, We'll replace the AVR and hopefully that brings everything back into line. So I think we're okay, nothing got fatally damaged here, but you can tell it's just this bracket here. It got pushed a little bit to the right and a little bit forward, which is gonna push harder on this spring, but it is still making contact with the plate enough that I don't think it's gonna be an issue. So I just need to back that off a few turns and the engine speed should be fine. All right, I'm gonna get this started again. Once running, I'll adjust it so that the speed is close to 61 and a half, and then we'll double check the voltage.
148 volts. Yeah, let's let's switch out the ABR. Yeah, I'm not even going to bother setting the engine speed. The AVR is not regulating the voltage, so I'm going to pull the end cap off. We'll get a different AVR in there and see if things work any better. Yeah, this one's a bit unique, this AVR that is. Usually it's just this connector here and then two wires going to the brushes, but this one has this extra connector here which goes up into the control panel. So I don't know what that is offhand. Potentially I can find a circuit diagram, but for now I'm going to plug in a standard AVR and fire it back up and see if the voltage comes down any. My AVR selection isn't too good, I'm kind of running out. Anyway, this one has the same size and rating on the capacitor. I think it's 470 microfarad at 450 volts. But the capacitors look rusted and not in very good shape. You know, I have this new one. It feels pretty light, kind of cheap looking. And it has a large capacitor. It's rated at same voltage, 450 volts, 680 microfarad. So, you know, I've heard... As long as the capacitor is the same or better in the rating, then we should be okay. So I haven't tried that myself, but I'm going to try it now. Yeah, unfortunately, they did not even bother labeling positive and negative going to the brushes. So I can't use this. You know, this one, capacitors are rusted and crusty. I'm not going to use that. And then I do actually have one more, but I labeled it bad because I think it was doing the same thing that this one was doing, running it at full voltage. But let me give it a try. I think... This is our best chance. volts, 61.1 hertz.
All right, well, I'm not so sure why I labeled that AVR bad because it's running the generator head just fine. So brought the engine speed up to 61.1 and then put a 1500 watt load on it. Everything's doing fine. So I think the biggest issue to figure out is what's going on with the oil module. So I'm gonna get it back inside. We're gonna to have to get most likely this panel off and take a look inside. All right, as you can see, there's a lot going on in here. There is a, I think, a bridge rectifier right there. And then this is the brains of the operation. This has the servo choke control. It also does the remote start and remote stop, which got me to thinking, you know, most generators, there's only two things that'll shut it off. It's the low oil sensor or module or the switch, you know, the ignition switch on the front. But this one has a third way of killing spark, which is this guy here. So maybe this is malfunctioning, or, or maybe it was sensing that the generator was producing too much voltage and killing the engine. So I think before cutting any wires, I want to get this back outside, start it back up with this plugged in to see if, now that the voltage is corrected, if this thing keeps running. Okay, I've got the yellow wire reconnected as well as the black. Let's just give this a start and see if there's any difference now that the voltage is under control. Okay, good. That was the issue. This actually has an overvoltage protection, which most don't have. You know, when AVRs fail, either they fail and the power goes out, or they fail and the power goes to 170 volts. And I have seen a few generators producing 170 volts, like this one was, and it just kept running like nothing was wrong. So, I'm starting to like this generator. It does have a lot of nice features. Anyway, We'll get it back inside, try to figure out where to go next. You know, I'm thinking I might try cutting off these pieces here that are damaged and, you know, straightening out these brackets. If I can do that, then I think this thing will look halfway respectable and then I'll order the rest of the parts I need. Otherwise, this might sit until I get another frame. I actually did see a frame about a week ago. It was for a... Stanley generator. It was also yellow and black, about the same size, and it would have been perfect to swap this engine and stator over on. And it was free. You know, unfortunately, someone beat me to it. So, you know, that that's also a viable option, but 
let's see what we can do with this and yeah maybe it'll um maybe it'll work out So I ended up getting the same airbox as I did for the other champion. And at the time, I thought this was the wrong airbox. You know, usually when you have a choke lever like this, you need a tab on the back of the airbox to hold this in place. But come to find out that's only for the six and a half horse clones. The larger ones actually have this screw that goes through the choke lever and holds it in place. So we'll get that installed. I also got the missing spring for the governor rod and then we'll put this new air box on and at that point mechanically and electrically we're done we just need to fix up or try to fix up the frame.
yeah, not too bad. I mean, I think I liked it better with the covers, but given the condition they were in, this is probably the better of the choices. Anyway, things are, I think, straightened out as much as they're going to get. I do need to grind, you know, all these bumps down where the spot welds were and throw a little bit of paint on there. And finally, we have the battery to install. I've already gone ahead and connected some wires. The black wire is just attached to the engine block and the red one to the starter solenoid. So I'm gonna get that battery in there. We'll cut those wires to size, add some connectors, and then we'll bring it outside for a load test.
All right, all set up here for the grand finale. I'm gonna get this thing started, let the engine warm up a bit, and then apply a 6,000 watt load. You know, I have no doubt that it will do well. And while it's running too, I actually forgot to check this the last time. This shows the voltage, the hertz, and I believe that is an engine hour counter. So I'm curious to see how many hours are on this machine. All right, this thing had no problem handling a 6,000 watt load. The engine speed held at 59 and a half hertz and the voltage was pretty close to 120 volts. So this thing is doing a very good job. And if you just ignore the dented tank and frame, you know, this thing is in excellent condition. And the engine only has seven hours on it. So this thing is barely through its break-in period. Most likely the original oil is still on that engine. So I'm gonna get it changed while it's hot, but I think I'm gonna cut the video here. I hope this video helps someone. Thanks for watching.